Welcome back, everyone, to this special bonus episode of Talking Smack, where we talk superheroes, movies, animation, and comics. I'm your host, Josh Scar, and I'm flying solo as I discuss some of the highlights from D23. As I am releasing this episode, there's one day left, but looking at the schedule, there's nothing that really is extremely interesting to me, so I'm just kind of going to release it after day two has mostly concluded. The main events were the Lucasfilm panel with Marvel and 20th Century as well. There was a 30th anniversary celebration for the Muppets Christmas Carol, which did announce a remastered edition coming to Disney Plus that'll have a new song, which is very exciting. But other than that, the main things were Marvel, Star Wars, and Avatar for these releases. Uh, Well, I guess Willow and a couple other things. But I'm going to go day by day here, and I'm going to start here with day one, which began with the video game showcase, which was not very great. Uh, I saw a lot of people getting upset that uh, Disney did not talk about Spider-Man 2 or the Wolverine PS4 game coming out or Kingdom Hearts 4. And that's because those games are not being made by Disney. Those games are being published by other companies and Disney is just licensing out their characters. So it makes sense that Disney didn't talk about any of those projects. Uh, But they did announce a Captain America and Black Panther game that's co-op, I believe, up to four players, probably similar to what Gotham Knights is. I hope it's good. the, The characters have me excited. The setting in World War II has me excited. I just don't know if it's going to be good because look at what happened with the Avengers game. They announced a a Rayman Legends looking game with Mickey, Donald, Goofy, and Minnie. Could be fun. Could be super generic. There's a Mario Kart clone coming out with Disney characters. It just, it looks fine. Nothing really great to write home about. Next, we had a couple of Disney Plus exclusives where we got new trailers for Hocus Pocus 2 which looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I like the idea that it's going to be a a young witch who gets empowered and through happenstance, shenanigans, whatever, uh, the Sanderson sisters come back. And then we also got a look at Disenchanted, which is a sequel to, I believe it's 2007 or 2008's Enchanted. And that looks like a lot of fun too. Uh, A nice twist on the idea where... Giselle being a stepmother now being manipulated by magic or temptation or power or something starts becoming a wicked stepmother and there there's other things going on but the main focus of the trailer was Giselle has that dual identity forming in her where she used to be the damsel and now she's becoming the the wicked stepmother and that was really fun I, I think that there's a lot of potential with that one. I forgot to look up dates on these. Hocus Pocus comes out at the end of September. Disenchanted, I believe, is November. I'm not sure. Uh, I could just pause the recording and look it up, but I'm too lazy to do that right now. It's been a long day. Other things with day one, Disney announced that they're doing a quote-unquote live-action prequel to The Lion King called Mufasa, The Lion King, which there's talent involved there. There's a good director attached, but it's not needed. I I get that the animated, not animated feature that's still computer animated uh, made over a billion dollars, but this is, this is so not needed. There is a a poster for Peter Pan and Wendy, which I think of any of the live action remakes that are coming out. This is the one I'm most interested in because there's so much potential for changing and improving things. Like on the poster, we see that Wendy is the one fighting hook. So there, there's some really cool dynamic shifting going on there. And then obviously uh, I'm curious what is going to be happening with the indigenous people of Neverland with Tiger Lily and her tribe and how that gets translated and how that gets fixed. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see what they do to try and write that blatant racism with the, the song that's in there about Tiger Lily and her tribe and it's it's I don't mean to laugh it off but it's it's it has not aged well just to say the least but I'm I'm interested and I'm hopeful that they they do what a lot of these Disney remakes have been doing which is encouraging diversity encouraging these 
changes that help empower people that were not necessarily empowered in these original creations. Next, we got a, a trailer for the live action Little Mermaid starring Halle Bailey as Ariel. It is pretty good technical showcase. It, it looks fine. We didn't really get a whole lot other than it's basically just an announcement trailer. We did get the last few lines from Part of Your World, which I will say, I am being honest here, it made Ricky cry, not me. I got chills, but I did not cry. But Ricky is very excited for it, and so are we. So am I and my kids. Um, next, we got Inside Out 2 confirmed from Pixar, which will be coming out in 2024. Uh, the Little Mermaid, by the way, coming out May 2023. And then the theatrical release portion of the, the Disney animation panel ended with uh, the announcement of the next Disney princess feature, which is going to be called Wish, which will be about how the wishing star came to be, which features uh, a black lead main character who will presumably be the next black Disney princess named Asha, who also has her animal sidekick, who is a goat, which is, of course, voiced by Alan Tudyk. Uh, but they released an image of Asha, which I should have in the thumbnail, along with a bunch of the other stuff going on. I'll try and make a collage if I can. And uh, I, I think it looks great, and I love the representation. Uh, I tweeted out how much I loved Ariel's hair, and uh, Asha uh, looks like she has her hair braided, and I just love that they're acknowledging and empowering black hair. Um, as someone who is very white, I, I still appreciate when they do that sort of stuff for kids to see themselves represented. And uh, it, it's just really cool to see Disney taking those steps because if there's if there's a complaint I can make towards The Princess and the Frog, which also would not include Tiana being a frog for a majority of the film, it's that they don't really do anything with her hair. Her hair stays pretty tightly closed up which i mean maybe maybe period accurate i'm not sure um but they they clearly didn't know what to do with it in the 2d animation but with these live action and 3d animated features they're able to do a bit more with the the animation so that's exciting and i hope people respond to that well and now it's time for the big shebang the lucasfilm marvel and 20th century panel that happened today as i'm recording uh, yesterday as we're releasing this uh, I'm gonna go with this go through this as how I saw it come across my Twitter feed uh, so the first thing we saw was uh, a new trailer for Andor which is the next Star Wars series coming out on Disney plus looks absolutely awesome it, it seems to follow the tone from Rogue One really well uh, the the drama in it just it it resonates through the trailer and I hope I hope that's consistent throughout the show like I don't want it to be harrowing but I do want it to have that really heavy tone of they're fighting a losing battle uh, that debuts with a three episode premiere on September 21st and uh, one of the standout moments from the trailer is that we do get a quick glimpse of uh, of Camino, the the cloning facility again and uh, it'll be interesting to see that area in live action once again Next up is Willow, which if you follow us on Twitter, you may have seen that there's a, a tweet on our account that says this is uh, an influential film. This is uh, something that looks great. Uh, that is an Alex tweet because I have seen Willow. I haven't seen it in literal decades, but I have no nostalgia for this movie. I, I really don't even remember what it's about. I remember there's a baby, there's Val Kilmer, and there's Warwick Davis, but that's kind of it. Um, I have no nostalgia for this movie, but the series does look really good. Like Disney obviously put money into this or Lucasfilm put money into this. Uh, and it starts streaming on November 30th, just in time for the Christmas holiday season to begin. Next up is probably the announcement that got me the most hyped throughout all of this. It was uh, a Clone Wars slash Attack of the Clone spinoff series, which is going to be called Tales of the Jedi. Uh it looks like it's going to focus heavily on Ahsoka and a young Count Dooku. And uh, it's being advertised as a series of, I believe, six short stories, which makes me a little sad because it the it looks in intriguing enough that it should be its own series uh, or at least like short film or movie or something. Um, 
looked like maybe we get a cl- quick glimpse of Yaddle, which that would actually be her first canonical appearance in the Star Wars universe. Um, the only thing that really took me out of the trailer was the the voice actor they got for Dooku, uh, young Dooku, sounded an awful lot like Alan Rickman more than he did Christopher Lee. So that was kind of weird. But overall, it, it looks amazing. And I, I'm very excited for this one. That one starts streaming on October 26th. The next trailer that I had up was the Mandalorian Season 3 trailer. And it it's continuing the story of Din Djarin and Grogu. And I, <laughs> I have no idea how I went from how and why would I be interested in this series back in 2018 to this being like the thing I'm looking forward to most almost every year. Uh, it, it's it's a really big testament to Jon Favreau and his team as to this story that they've created in the world within the Star Wars universe that they're they're building as well. And I'm, I'm very excited to see where this goes. And obviously they're building towards some kind of big crossover with Ahsoka and uh, Boba Fett and Mando and Carl Weathers character and whoever else. But I, Mando is always up there as far as reasons to keep your Disney Plus subscription going or renewing it once it comes out. The next trailer that came out was... The next trailer I saw was Werewolf by Night, which comes out on October 7th on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I can't wait for all the fanboys to just complain about this, that it's not scary enough or that it's too campy. Marvel and Disney are not going to be releasing a hard R-rated movie or miniseries, whatever this ends up being. Uh, it, it looks like it'll be fun. It looks like there'll be plenty of jump scares. I like the fact that it's kind of, at least the trailer is all in black and white. I hope that aesthetic stays And uh, look, we got a quick glimpse of Man-Thing in there, which is awesome. Uh, Man-Thing is (laughs) hard to explain in what I'm trying to make a quick episode. Uh, Definitely look him up. He's kind of a, looks like something that should be from Swamp Thing, but it's Marvel's, basically Marvel's version of Swamp Thing. But the Werewolf by Night looks like a lot of fun, and I might make a bonus episode on that one. The next trailer that came up was for Secret Invasion. Lots of intrigue and mystery. Not a whole lot of story given other than a few action beats. We did get a few quick glimpses of Amelia Clark in the trailer, but we don't really know her role in this series yet. We do get to see Maria Hill kind of take a shot at Fury when he she says that he just kind of went off planet for a few years and just never bothered returning calls. Uh, the relationship between all these characters is going to be a big driving point for this series, and I'm I'm here for it. If it's anything like the comic version of Secret Invasion, where you just don't know who is who and who you can trust, it's going to be a lot of fun. There was confirmation as well that Armor Wars is going to be coming still. We don't have any official dates or further cast announcements besides John Cheadle, and um, we will be getting Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams in this series as well. Uh, what her role is, we don't know. Yeah, we just know that she is going to be part of the, the series in some way and probably in some kind of supporting role. She will make her debut in the MCU in Wakanda Forever. The next thing we had was confirmation of Matt Shockman taking over for Fantastic Four. There was no cast announcement, at least at the time I'm recording this, because I'm skipping Sunday. Who knows? Maybe they'll announce it and I'll look like a jackass, which... I mean, not hard to do anyway. Um, Then there was a a quick Marvels discussion where they had Brie Larson, Iman Vellani, and Tayana Paris come out and talk about the movie a little bit. Um, Nothing really new was discussed. Uh, There's a sizzle reel that kind of just showed previous footage. And then they kind of moved on because they had to get to a lot of things. And then the last thing that I'm going to talk about before wrapping up here is the Thunderbolts lineup was debuted and we have confirmation that the team will be led by Yelena uh, as the new Black Widow. Bucky will also be on the team as well as Red Guardian in a new costume. U.S. Agent Ghost, which I thought was kind of surprising. I didn't even remember that she was still running around out there because of all the craziness that's been going on. Uh, Taskmaster is returning and they will be led by Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, a.k.a. Madame Hydra. And this this movie is going to be very 
interesting because it's going to draw a lot of comparisons to the Suicide Squad. And I don't think that's a fair comparison because who knows what they're actually trying to do with this lineup. Be- like from what I'm from what I can see here, a lot of these are anti-heroes who are maybe being reformed into a new Avengers team or a government version of the Avengers. I I really can't quite grasp what they're going for here, especially when you consider they have three Russians on the team. It's strange to say the least because the, that obviously there's <laughs> some some uh, tension going on with Russia in the modern political era and uh, the war crimes that they're committing in the Ukraine. So having three Russian hero anti-heroes in this lineup is very strange. And then you also have to remember that Bucky has ties to Russia. So there's some weird stuff going on as far as like all these Russians in this new Thunderbolts lineup. Uh, But you also have to consider that there are three super soldiers on the team. And that's interesting because there are rumors that Zemo might also show up in the in the film. And if he's working with the Thunderbolts, that's two out of the three people he really does not care for and probably wants to kill. Um, Taskmaster might also be considered a super soldier. We'll see what happens with her because she obviously did not have a whole lot of personality in the the last movie. She was just kind of a MacGuffin. And then I'm mostly intrigued by Julia Louis-Dreyfus as uh, Valentina, a.k.a. Madame Hydra, because... (laughs) <laughs> who who knows what they're trying to do with this, especially with this being the last film before we start the the two end caps of uh, the back to back Avengers movies in this uh, phase. I think it's phase five that they're ending all of this on. So lots of interesting stuff happening, but not a lot of details, which is the Marvel way. And there was also a, a Daredevil panel that basically just had Charlie Cox come out and say, hey, it's going to be Daredevil. He's not going to be slapstick, but he's not going to be as serious as before. You got to get over it and make your peace with it now. Um, But other than that, that will do it for me on this D23 bonus episode. Thank you for sitting through it. If you have any thoughts, opinions, uh, theories, whatever you want to call them, you can tweet at us at TalkingSmackPod. You can email us at tsmackpod at gmail.com. You can like, subscribe, review, and uh, thank you to Leo Allen for our musical themes, and we will see you on Wednesday when Matt and I have a follow-up interview with Adam Rose, and then next week we will be having a another episode of our Looking Back series where myself, Antonio from the Cult Worthy Podcast and Matt from Decaying with the Boys will be looking at the 2018 movie Upgrade. Look forward to those episodes in the coming weeks, and we will see you soon. Watch Star Trek.